that's one way of choosing a place for a school trip. Just take potluck and use a pin. But what happens if you arrive at the place and it's closed or there's no food or loose, nowhere to park or even that it's just not worth visiting? Now, where did I put that pin? Ah, Scunthorpe. Just a job. Well, maybe not. We're going to go on a school visit. Has any of you any ideas where you would like to go for a visit? And then? Florida to Disneyland. Peak District. Why the Peak District? To go walking through countryside. Austria. Why Austria? Because of the mountains. David? I would like to go to Spain. Why Spain? Because I've heard that it's warm, very warm. Scunthorpe. Scunthorpe? Why Scunthorpe? Because it's good. <laughs> Before you can plan the trip, you need lots of facts, such as how far will you have to travel, how much will it cost, and so on. You can collect your information or data in something called a database. And the simplest form is a little box file like this. Now, this works very well if you only keep a little information. Hmm. But if you want to get access to lots of data, then you might need help from a computer and a database. Let's see how they work. Here's a good example. A library keeps a huge number of books. This one in Doncaster has about a million. With such a lot to choose from, how do you, the reader, go about finding the book you want? You may know the author of the book or the title, or maybe you just want to know what's available for a particular subject. The first step is to check the library catalogue where all the information about the books is stored. Have you found anything yet? No, I'll keep looking. It's divided into sections. The Titles Index tells you where to find the book if you know the proper title. In the Author Index, each author has a set of cards listing the books available. And finally, there's a Number Index. So, each book title needs at least three cards in the index. And if you keep a million books, well, that's a lot of cards. The catalogue has to be continually altered as new books are bought and some old books removed. It's all a bit messy, so many libraries, like this one in Doncaster, are putting the information about the books into a computer database. The title, author, publisher and subject matter are typed into the computer. This information, called the record of the book, is given a number. That number, printed as a barcode, is stuck inside the book itself. How does the computer help you find a book? Suppose you want to look for an atlas. Type the word atlases into the computer and it will start to search through all its records for any atlases. When all the records have been checked, a list of atlases will appear on the screen for you to choose the one you want. The computer then tells you whether the atlas is available on the shelves or whether all the copies have been taken out by other readers. Travel, that's what we're looking for. National Trust. Ah, here it is. Since all the book's details have been stored in the computer database, then the checkout system can also be controlled by the computer. Hello, thank you. Just taking this one book today, are you? The barcode number on your library ticket and the one in the front of the book are entered into the computer. The book is then automatically checked out against your name. So, that's the sort of thing a computer database can do. Now here's a problem for you. How can you use your school computer to set up a database of school trips and places to visit? Now, what's that do with that pin? Ah, let's have another go. Uh. Oh, no, not again.